Okay, so in this video, we're gonna check out how to debug gateway errors, which you might see when running Laravel applications, specifically with Nginx and PHP FBM, which is the typical way to run Laravel apps nowadays. In our case here, we are checking out bad gateway errors and timeout errors, gateway timeouts. All right, so the first question to ask yourself is, what is a gateway? The gateway in this case is a thing sitting between your web server, typically Nginx, and your application code, the PHP code for Laravel, and that thing in the middle is PHP FPM. This thing converts a web request with the help of Nginx into something that PHP understands and can react to. So these two very common type of gateway errors, the most common, are a bad gateway and gateway timeout. A bad gateway is typically when your gateway is like off, it's just not there, so PHP FPM might not be running anymore, or it returns an error, which might be something like a um, maximum number of process limits, a max children error has occurred, so it can't process any more requests, or something like a seg fault error in your PHP code, which is more rare, but happens. Gateway timeout errors typically happen when your server is overloaded. You'll typically see your database being overloaded and not returning queries in time, causing a timeout in general, although this can happen with other stuff, like maybe your Redis instance isn't returning responses in time as well, but almost always it's a database uh, issue where it's overloaded. Okay, so how do you actually debug these things? What I do is I start at the top of the stack and work my way down. The very top of the stack is Nginx. The web server is the very first thing that receives a request to your server in general. So I will flow through my logs. In our case, we're gonna check out from the top of the stack Nginx and move our way down. So Nginx, PHP FPM, and then your application logs, and there's some other server stuff to look at also. So what we wanna do here is check out our logs. The logs are the important thing to look at for errors uh, to get the appropriate message here, to get message that is useful, something you can act on and fix. So I'm gonna move into my Nginx logs here. I'm gonna list out any directory that starts with app and ends in log, or dot log in this case. And we see I have two things here, the error log and the access log. And these log files can show you, you know, interesting information. Um, you might see actual errors in here, I don't know. Um, in this case, we can see the primary script is unknown. So someone tried to send a request to something that's not indexed at PHP or something like that. Or sometimes you see like this, the socket file doesn't exist, which is a clue that PHP FPM might not be writing or has some kind of error. Now, Nginx logs are typically not as useful as the next layer down in your PHP FPM logs. So if we go here, we'll search in this directory for things that have PHP in it. We can see I have PHP FPM, PHP 8.2 FPM logs in there. And we can see if there's errors in there. In my case, I don't have any errors on this server for that stuff, but this is the most useful place to see um, what your errors might be because you might see an error such as server reached PM max children. Um, this is a signal that your server is um, not necessarily out of resources, but PHP FPM's configuration isn't letting you serve more concurrent web requests. The max children is the number of processes PHP FPM spins up. Each uh, process allows for one more concurrent web request to be processed at the same time. And the max children typically starts at a small value, like two or five or 10 or something like that. I almost always bump this up to something like 10 or 20, but it totally depends on how much RAM your server uses. That's a topic for another video. If you see this error reached PM max children, or there's another error that says it's close to reaching that, you might wanna bump that value up. So the maximum number of web requests that server can handle, that PHP FPM can handle, uh, is increased. And of course you need to balance that with the server resource usage of your server. So um, you can install and use something like HTOP on your server to see how much memory and your CPU cores and all that good stuff are being used and by what processes. If your server is overloaded, you might not want to increase your PHP FPM configuration, that Max Children config, you might instead want to get a bigger server, right? More RAM, more CPUs. So the Nginx logs are kind of useful. The PHP FPM logs are probably useful, uh, especially if you see that Max Children error. You might want to use something like HTOP, like we just saw to check out server resource usage, but you also should check out your disk usage to see what percentage of the uh, usage your disks are at, right? So here, this is my root drive at 63% usage. That's not too bad. If it's at like 99 or 100%, that's something to check out. The other times you might see errors um, are when your usage isn't totally high, but your inode usage is high. Inodes are index nodes, and they are things that Linux servers use to keep track of files, uh, especially open files. In Linux's usage, almost everything is a file. So open network connections are actually uh, using files and therefore increasing your inode usage. If your inode usage is like 100%, it might actually look like your server is out of memory and they're not. 
uh, if the inode usage is like 100%, it can't open new files and won't accept new network requests. So that's another thing to check as well when you see these gateway errors. Finally, you might want to check out your application log files, right? Your Laravel.log file to see if there's errors in there as well. You might find some useful errors in there, but typically that's not as useful for gateway errors. Typically your PHP app isn't even receiving that request if it's getting a gateway error, or if it is, the request is timing out and PHP doesn't even get the chance to log a uh, error to the log in that case sometimes. But overall, the lesson here is to always check your log files when you see errors like this. The logs are always gonna have some useful information here. Hopefully your server's not so overloaded that you can't even access the logs. In which case, if that happens to you in the future, you might wanna ship your logs to a third party like a log tail or something like that. So if you run into an issue like your server is overloaded and you can't even connect to it to find your logs, then you have a place to look to see where your logs might be.